Okay, everyone. Hey, how you doing? We're live. I'm Nick Baldwin. I am admin of Commander Conversion, also co-founder of Lab Code Agents. And we're live today with a much anticipated webinar with one, two, three, four, five, six. Trent and Carissa threw me off because there's two in one little window there. There's six awesome agents here doing between 20 and 35 million in production. And guess what? They're only using command to run their business, but that can't be done. That's impossible. Oh, but it isn't. So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourself. We'll start with Carissa and Trent Zimmer. Say hello and tell us about yourselves. Uh, hello everybody. Trent and Carissa Zimmer here from, uh, actually we live in a suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, we have been in business since 2013. Uh, we'll do just shy of 35 million this year. We've been with KW for two years. Uh, we have two agents and soon to be two admin. Um, so we're a pretty small team. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say that's probably about it. Very awesome. Kimberly Meserve, say hello and tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Kimberly Meserve. I'm an agent in Boston. Um, I have a team now, but um, very newly formed. So actually everything that we're going to talk about today is production that was just myself this year. Uh, we did just, I, I did just under 24 million this year. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to growing coming into 2021. Very cool. Josh Bickle, Bickle Brand. I'll never forget the name of your team. Josh, what's up? Where are you from and what are you doing here? I am Josh. I'm from Toronto. Uh, that Well, I'm just east of Toronto and south of Toronto. Um, both. I TL the Keller Williams Golden Triangle Brokerage and I also run a team that's doing around 20 to 21 million dollars a year, um, about an hour and a half away in Durham region. Uh, from where I am, been doing this for about five years, and most of it has been command since launch. Very awesome. Erin McKenzie, tell us about yourself. Hey there, Erin McKenzie, uh, located in Brighton, Michigan. I own My Roots Real Estate Group. Um, we'll wrap up 2020 just north of 40 million when we're all said and done. I've been real estating for 16 years, KW for five and a half. Um, we made the switch over to command during the lockdown. And awesome, that's good it. stuff. And oh, your I'm team leader. That's mentioned the, no. you mentioned your team leader. I, I've been TLing for six months here at KW Living. So you've been real estating and team leadering at Correct. the same time. Mm -hmm. And Julie Youngblood, what is up? Tell us about yourself. Hey, Nick, and everybody watching. So my name is Julie Youngblood. I hail from the desert, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I've uh, been on command since we launched, but I made a completely cut out my other CRM. I was doing that in tandem thing uh, this year in February when we all decided we weren't allowed to go see each other in public anymore. So we just went all in. It's been awesome. Um, I spent a little bit of time selling real estate. I spent most of my time working with guys and gals like you out there in the coaching world. And um, I'm a Leo. I've got two kids and one smoking hot husband. Woo, I'm a Pisces. I don't know if that matters to anybody but all right cool let's jump right into it and i don't really care who answers this question i want to know well who answered it first right i want to know when you guys started using command because command's not that old i mean we're coming up on about two years in february 2021 and i know some of you guys were super crazy and jumped in like the moment they gave you access you know what i'll start with josh I'll start with Josh. Josh, you started using command in February 2019, 19. like right when Josh team was like, hey, command is, is open for everybody. And Josh is like, oh, cool, I'm going to use it. So tell us what that was like, because you couldn't do anything with it at that point. So what was <laughs> what was going through your mind to make you just start using it when really couldn't do much? Well, the first thing that was going through my mind was I just left the team and was going on my own and went, wow, there's $1,200 a month in savings. Um, so I'm going to do that because that sounds like a great idea. Um, and then the second thing that was going on my mind was, was sitting through family reunion, listening to everything and I'm going, command is the future. This is where we're going. This is the future direction of Keller Williams. And I went to myself, I've got two options here. I can, number one, a, be like what everyone else is going to do that I'd heard that it opened it up so far and wait until it's perfect. 
or I can jump in and be the master of it by the time it's perfect and then wait for everyone else to catch up to me. Um, and so I went that way and I've always been a believer that growth in the industry comes from pain. Command at that time was pain, which meant there was nothing but growth and opportunity that was available for us to do. So I was like, hey, this is a pain point. I'm going to make it my pain point. We're going to break our systems. We're going to learn how to do it. And we're going to grow our business because of it. Hey, Trent, you actually said to me before something similar to what Josh said, you know, you decided that you guys decided to jump in because you didn't want to be left behind and play catch up. And you said when it was first launched, it was just kind of like a fancy Rolodex. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about like, you know, uh, to Josh's point, like why that was a deciding factor for you? My decision runs parallel to almost everything that he just said. And um, it literally was like a digital Rolodex at the time I got it. But what's cool is that I chose to find all the things that it was going to do well for me right then and there instead of wait for it. And so I was already busy making a list of tags that we were going to implement and all these things while everyone else was sitting around going, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. And now I have my tags organized. I got them done in color. And, um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing was I was going to the mega camp and family reunion and all these things. And I was seeing the vision and I knew what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I figured I might as well go in now and, and be really good at it. Otherwise I'm going to be way behind. And I would consider myself to be pretty savvy with it. And I already feel behind Nick, your videos you do are so good. And I sort of, I, every yeah. time something pops up, I tag her in the comments. Cause I'm like, we got to do this. And then another one comes and I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's so much happening, but it's I'm, just I'm, get in it. Just get in when, it. I'm when you tag were, Carissa, well, I was going to say, Carissa, when he tags think? you, you know, when he tags <laughs> you in, in a, in a post, I mean, he's basically saying, Carissa, you should do this because I don't know how. Totally. And I think what helped us too is when he was in the lab, which helped, you know, we were just inputting all of our contacts in the command. That was literally a, a day job for me, really, is I was just inputting contacts. And then we cut everything else out and we were in like Google Sheets and in all these like scrappy different, I don't know, spreadsheets and gosh knows what. So it kind of forced us to get into command because we were, we were in so much pain in Google Sheets trying to manage everything that we're like, let's just get in and go. So we just ripped the band-aid right off. Which oh, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, Julie, um, I know that you, you know, you're using it only, obviously you're on this webinar because you're using it only with your team. So, you know, when you started using it, when you started using it at the same time, right? Launch a family reunion? Yeah. So day one, I felt like just like you guys, right? I might as well learn it, but I was very financially motivated to learn it because I was spending just to log into my CRM, $1,500 a month. And so very excited to figure out how can I make this work to get, you know, 18 G's back a year. So we, um, we started with the easiest group of people, the most forgiving group, our sphere of influence. Right. And so we literally just worked our sphere in there until it was enough, like the, the Facebook ads were enough. The lead routing was enough. The opportunities was enough for us to say, forget it. Let's save 1500 bucks a month and we'll manipulate the system and use it the way that we need to, to really just to maintain what we've been doing. So Julie, you said something interesting. You were like, you know, I decided to start using it immediately because of features that were coming in the future, right? So I think that that's a really powerful statement. So talk to me about that. Like you were like, okay, command is going to be able to do this, but I'm going to start using it now. Most people won't start using something until it can actually do that. So what was your thought process behind that? Well, like I said, I was pretty financially motivated to make it work. Um, not only did I have one CRM for lead generation and for sphere follow-up, I had another CRM I used for transaction management. And so you know, when you look at opportunities and if you plug in like at any level at any of the webinars or mega camp or family reunion, what you recognize is like this stuff is all coming. Um, you just got to be willing to like wait it out. And then just like the, um, just like Trent did, like at one point, at some point opportunities is going to be so plug and play. I've already got all my auto emails written. It is not there yet. And when it is, I will be like the first one to be like, guess what guys. And so I was, I'm just more motivated about how do I increase my bottom line knowing that the system will get there eventually? Cause let's be real. Like who cares how many deals you do if you don't profit? 
True. And so that was, that's a huge factor for us. Like between the ad spend that we had and between just logging into that CRM and what I spent for my transaction management CRM, right? I'm, I'm saving like 36 grand a year. That's like a person. That total, I mean, that's a salary really. And how you can invest so much more into your business that way. Um, <clears throat> I want to go to Aaron and then Kimberly, of course, I'll go to you. Don't worry. I didn't forget. You're sitting very patiently. Um, Aaron, because Aaron is in my region and I was regional tech trainer of your region. I remember like your team wasn't all in at first. Um, and this was maybe only six or seven months ago. And you were waiting for certain features and you actually decided to make the leap before those features were released. Um, what made you decide to do that? Finally, what was like, you know, that moment you're like, you know, what, guys, we got to make this, we got to make this shift. Sure. So um, when the world got shut down in March, yeah, March, I was, I had had a baby two weeks prior and um, it was kind of a big, a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and we had been toying with and moving towards um, command slowly, but surely, but we were on a system that we loved a lot. And with the shutdown, you know, I've been in real estate for 16 years, went through the recession, but this is, I own a team now and I'm responsible for people's livelihoods and my staff are my sun and my moon and my stars. And if you know me or my girls, you know, that's really true. And so making sure that I could keep them paid became number one. And obviously things have shaken out just fine and we're more profitable and making, you know, selling more houses and everything's okay. But in March, we didn't know what that was going to look like. So it was people above perfection and dumping our old CRM that we were spending lots of money on to make sure that I could keep the girls paid was, was priority. And it's, it has been painful. We, we miss a lot of features that our old system had, and we had spent a lot of time building that out, but command's not perfect. It doesn't have every bell and whistle, but we're seeing every new thing come out. And I'm saving the money to make sure that my staff is taken care of. You said something, I mean, basically uh, the reason you made the switch is because you wanted to, you were going through the pandemic and a lot of people started laying people off or, you know, firing certain, um, you know, people on their team that do certain things for them. You were like, you know what, if I'm going to keep everybody, I'm going to have to sacrifice a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that that's super powerful. Um, Kimberly, let's talk about, you're, I, you just like love opportunities. That's your favorite, right? And uh, your business li literally doubled from last year to this year. Um, so tell us why you're using command and why you love opportunities so much and what it's doing for you. Well, first of all, I am surprised to hear that I am actually the longest standing command user on here. You are. I am. I've actually been using it before it came out at Family Reunion. So. was like, I've been using it longer oh. than you guys. <laughs> Hey, whatever. Someone like let me into a lab. I don't know. I don't. I know. actually <laughs> thought of command. I came up with the idea. <laughs> I told you. We don't get into labs until we bludgeon our way in. <laughs> Someone like let me into a lab. I don't like. I I like a few years ago really didn't do a lot of business. I don't know who thought like her. Like let's let yeah. Her. Um, but I I fortunately was. So I've actually been using command since fall of 2018. And I just like Josh had just left a team and had no money. And so I was like, great, this free thing for me. This is awesome. <laughs> um, but I'm also not a big, like, like if I had to shop for CRMs, like I'm not huge into the bells and whistles and all of that stuff, because that's just not how I use my database. Like the database is a way for me to organize my information and for me to like remind myself to like continue relationships with people. Um, I don't care as much about like sending them this fancy thing or that fancy thing. It's more for me to be like, oh yeah, I need to talk to that person because like at the end of the day, it's about the relationship and the conversation that I'm having. Um, and to the point of organizing it, um, opportunities was one of the first features that was available. And so uh, 2018, like going into 2019, my, I was at the same time kind of working with a new coach and she was like, okay, so what does your business look like? Like, what does your pipeline look like? And the conversation always went back to the pipeline. And I set some pretty lofty goals for myself. I more than doubled from 2018 to 2019. And then 2019 to 2020, I, I also more than doubled. Um, and it always went back to the pipeline. So I treat opportunities like my pipeline. I know a lot of people just put someone in there once they have a deal for compliance, because that's how we get paid now. 
but I put every person that raises their hand uh, as having interest in buying or selling real estate. If they're within two years, they're going in my opportunities pipeline. And so I've been able to use that as a really good visual tool to be like, okay, so next year we're going to double the business again. Do we have enough people in the pipeline already to support that? And if not, what are our gaps? Well, by the way, I just want to mention, I just want to talk about that for a second and anybody else can chime in as well. Um, you brought up a really important point. The cultivate phase is probably, in my opinion, the hands down the most important phase in opportunity because it's your future business. No business person or business in general can thrive on right now business. And unless you are putting people into cultivate or creating a goal or an expectation around that for your agents. Okay, guys, this every week you got you got to put X amount of, of people into cultivate. And if, and if they're not, you know, that they're probably not having conversations. Um, would you guys agree with that? And, and if you have anything else to add, let's talk about how important the cultivate phase is and what are you using for stages, right? Like when someone says I'm a year out from buying, like what's the follow-up process with that? Cause that's what, where most agents get really lost. Yeah. So I have always been huge on like the future business and not the now business. And I see so many of my friends that are agents, like oh, you know, I need to get like another deal to, to stay on goal. And they don't know where that piece of business is coming from. Um, it's relieved a lot of stress for me in my life. So we actually like our team and our systems, a lot of it is focused on getting into relationship with people as soon as possible. So if, if a buyer tells me they're 12 months out, I'm going to try to sign them as a buyer. Like I'm going to set an appointment and I'm going to sign them. And people say that buyers are liars, but that's not true. It's just that people don't always know what they want until they get started. And I can't tell you how many people have told me they were 12 or 18 months out. And then like three months later, they bought a house. So what we've done is we've broken down the cultivate stage into like watch, nurture, and hot. And I've actually customized the time frames on that just to make it super clear for all of my teammates. Okay. This is what bucket each stands for. So watch is 12 to 18 months. Nurture is six to 12 months. And then hot is six or less or less than six, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You guys all basically said opportunities is your favorite. But before we jumped on the webinar in the pre-interview, because I prepared slightly for this one. Um, and you guys all said opportunities was your, was your favorite and most important to your business. So Carissa, you also said that too. How so? And are you using it similarly to Kimberly? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're pretty much doing spot on what she just said. What and she just mentioned in terms of the cultivate phase is, is basically it's, identical. It's identical. And we did not plan that. Which is super awesome because I came from the consumer good, goods world and forecasting was like my middle name. Like we were constantly forecasting and timing it out because, you know, Q4 was like our biggest time of the year. And so all year you're, you're working on that, but then you're already preparing for the next year. So right now I'd be focused on 2021. Well, command has allowed me and my team to know where Trent and his team is going. Like, I know exactly what they're going to do. I, when he throws these goals out and these numbers, I'm like, yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's all adding up, which is super awesome for um, all the admin staff. Cause they just, they we're all in alignment. I guess it's a really good word. She's more that. op side. So I'm really the one who's more living in opportunities. She's more living in it for the checklist and I'm more living in yep. it to track the, the deals. But um, what I love and, and I agree with Kimberly on is that anytime someone has a conversation, they go in there. It doesn't yeah, matter. It, they go in there. And what's awesome about this is I know everyone on this call and, and the people watching as agents, we've all had days where we've gone in and we've gone, I have nothing to do today. And you scratch your head and you're kind of like, I, I don't have any deals. It's the 4th of July. Everyone's on vacation. What should I do? Go into your cultivate and shake that tree because I guarantee you there's somebody in there who's going to take action and it's going to happen really quickly. And it's funny because what I love the most about opportunities for me is, and I was just telling Chris this the other day, because we are actually in the middle of moving offices. I'd find a post-it note with somebody's name on it, right? Stuck to my desk or whatever. And I'd look up their name and I'd scroll down their social media and I'd see that three months ago they built a house. And I lost that deal because they weren't in my opportunities. If they would have been in front of me in cultivate, I would have seen that. Mm -hmm. And that has been a game changer for us. So it's funny, Kimberly and, and, and our team are, we're so similar in the way that we structure that cultivate. Phase. And, and opportunities and cultivate is not just for the agents. Like I'm constantly having Instagram 
direct message uh, conversations with friends who are talking about houses or commenting on the things that our team is doing or posting. And I'm adding people into Cultivate and assigning them to an agent, which is so awesome because then I can write a little note, explain what the conversation I had with them and pass it off to him and his team. Um, so I think that's, that's yeah, huge. That's huge. And, and someone in the chat over here on Facebook, it was uh, Nicole Resnick, she says that she, you know gamifying opportunities has changed her business and her mindset. And you know that's what we were saying before. Like if you're running a team, or even if you're not, if you're a solo agent, you know give yourself a goal. Okay, every day I'm going to add one person to cultivate. Every day I'm going to move one person in cultivate over to another stage. Every day I'm going to take someone from cultivate and put them into appointment. So gam gamify those three. Uh, those three instances every single day and, 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 you know, keep moving people along. All right, let's talk. Um, oh, did you want to say something? I was just going to say, Kimberly said one thing that everybody should take from this call. And that's if a buyer tells you they're ready in 12 months, it's really three to six. So don't right. wait, get them in there and go. <laughs> like, I've got a smart. Oh, go ahead. Kimberly. Oh, I was just going to say, can I just jump in? Cause I was looking at the questions and a bunch of people asked follow-up questions to what I was saying about that. So the script that we use with buyers is that we say, okay, you know, you might be 12 months out, but that's fine. Like it's better to get started in the process sooner rather than later in case there's like adjustments that we have to make along the way. So we'll do the buyer consultation. We'll talk about their criteria. And then we say, we're going to get you set up on property alerts. You may not be ready to go out and start actively looking at properties because we're not going to do that until you're ready to put offers in. Um, and so if they do ask along the line, then we say, oh, has something changed with their, your timeline? Is this, if you want to see this house, is this something you want to put an offer in on? And um, they'll say, yes, like my timeline totally changed. Um, and then we say, so in that time between now and when you're ready to actually go out and look at properties, you're going to start getting market alerts and property alerts and see what things are selling, going on the market for and selling for. And by the time you are ready to go out and shop, you're now going to be one of the most educated buyers out there. Totally. And, and everyone is agreeing with you guys like post-it notes. I've missed so many deals, shake the opportunity tree. Um, today I, I, I reached out to a bunch of people in my, my database and some dude was like, oh, I moved to California. And even though he moved to California, I missed out on that referral. So you never, you never know. Okay. Um, all of you said your main source of business is your database or your sphere of influence. And Julie, I know that you're really big on that, right? So you utilize smart plans a lot with keeping in touch, correct? So can you talk a little bit about your strategy around that? I love smart plans. I, I consider smart plans to be my boss. And I just want you guys to know real estate agents, we're not good bosses. We need a boss and that's command, right? So yes, we built out before it was cool. Um, we started building out smart plans, which were really just task plans, right? That would say, call Kimberly. And because I know Kimberly, I don't need a script guys. I know what to say to Kimberly, right? Text Carissa, cool, what's going on with Carissa? They're moving offices. Hey, Carissa, how's it going? I heard you're moving your office, right? So um, we just build out a smart plan and we, we've done some research around top of mind and why it's important to do it every so often. And obviously we also learned, which by the way, most of the stuff you guys learned through trial and error, right? In command, like nobody taught me that I could layer a smart plan. I literally saw the button that said, add smart plan. And I was like, Oh, so I can add the share my app smart plan to my SOI smart plan and I don't have to trigger it. Sign me up for that. And so we just got really um, clear on that, built it out, made sure everybody was in there and then made sure that the other smart plans that trigger like the birthday plan, like the home anniversary, that I had a task ahead of time so that I would go in and add their home anniversary and add their birthday. And so smart plans just remind, like if you don't, it's not that we don't care about people. I mean, I think we do care about people, but I'm one of those people that if, if something doesn't tell me to tell you that I care, just know I care, but this lets you know it, right? Like it's my to do to let Nick know, I think about you all the time, man. And here's proof. I'm pretty so. sure that I'm on some task reminders because Julie does text me checking in. Erin, um, I want to go to you because you said that smart plans is your favorite and the most helpful to your business. So how are you using them? Are you using them like Julie for sphere of influence? You guys do a lot of internet lead generation too. So if you're using it in that sense, let's talk about that as well. We do. So um, I have to be completely transparent that my girls do most of this stuff for me because I'm focused on TL world and right. less on the business these days. You're a team leader so, at a market center, but you're still the rainmaker of MI Roots. Correct. Totally cool. Yeah. 
so Jessica and Abby um, are the queens of, of all of that. And Jessica is our, our marketing manager and she also does all of our ISA. And watching her stay on top of things and organize through the smart plans and everybody's on a system, no leads fall through the cracks, which we've never really had set up before is absolutely amazing. Just it's, it's so empowering as a, a rainmaker who's not in the business every day to be able to check in on what's going on. I'm, I'm able to inspect what I expect and it's all right there handled and done. And having a great person to run it obviously helps a ton, but having a system to run it on is amazing. So like what kind of steps within smart plans are you using? I know that Julie is really into tasks and reminders, not so much setting up automated text messages. So what, what type of mixture of, of, oh, sorry, I go did, ahead. I did just start doing that though. Oh, like you it's did? evolution, right? Oh, so wow. Okay. I have started to do that for my, because of the way that it looks now through the team. Okay. I'll, I'm sorry, Erin. Oh, you're totally good. Cause you actually probably know more about it than I do. Um, it, it's mostly tasks as far as I'm aware. Um, um, Jessica's also been on maternity leave. We've had a baby boom recently. So, um, <laughs> That's what's going on. Babies during quarantine? It's weird, huh? That's another webinar we're going to do later. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So lots of tasks because you guys do generate um, business from, from Facebook. Uh, right. And so you definitely need follow up with that. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what those plans look like? They're mostly just task based and follow up. It's, it's really simple. Just reminding whoever's task it is to stay top of mind and not drop the lead. Um, yeah. When we had our agents receiving leads on round robin, they were calling once, maybe twice, even if we were putting them on um, a smart plan in our old CRM, the tasks were getting unfulfilled, but mm -hmm. um, now we're on command and Jessica's following through with those tasks and no lead goes unfollowed. Hey, Josh, you said that your most of your business comes from your database but i know that you have some you have a lot of success with facebook so i just want to talk a little bit about your experience with facebook leads through command and how you are building smart plans and follow-up systems around that making me look like a liar i promised in the chat that i wouldn't talk about facebook ads and leads today and stuff like that who said <laughs> no, who joking. did you lie to <laughs> in one of the original posts but yeah we do about 20 percent of our business comes from using campaigns in command um and then most of our follow-up is done through smart plans like this is an insane tool yes most of my sphere and then the people that we're doing we limit the amount of automation that they go on other than emails because we want it to be personalized. But knowing people who are coming in from other sources, whether that be door knocking, whether that be Facebook, whether that be cold calling, no matter where it's coming from, those are mostly long-term projects. They're, they're very, very diamond in the rough that you're getting that early person. And our time is everything. Our time is money. So we created leverage systems using emails in Twilio. Um, I'm very much, a, if someone says I'm supposed to do one thing, I double it. So we're supposed to have a 33 touch program. I have a 72 touch program. Uh, <laughs> so you're very subtle <laughs> with your follow-up. I'm, I'm very, you, you will get contacted from me every week of the year in some way from our business. Well, every more, single right, week almost, of the year, some of them twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you come into our system, only three times are you getting an actual phone call, or sorry, five times, five times are you getting an actual phone call from us. All of the rest of our follow-ups for unmets are all automated through emails going out, through text messages going out. Some of it, we're just using what command is already provided. Some of it we've built ourselves, like we have a, a buyer's plan that sends a bi-weekly email that is a value email targeted directly towards buyers if we know you're going to buy. We have a seller smart plan that is a bi-weekly email that provides a value email that will be towards sellers. We have a smart plan that if we met you and we don't know what you are, we put you on both and they will alternate. So one week you'll get a buyer email, the next week you'll get a seller email, then the next week you'll get a buyer email, <laughs> the next week you'll get a seller email until you respond and I figure out what you are. That's actually that's kind of brilliant. That's what we want to do. I never thought of doing that. That's actually kind of brilliant until you know what type of transaction they want to get into. That's actually, I love that idea. Literally our, our 
Facebook follow-up plan, which you can get. My, my plans are all live. You can search me in the command library. All of my plans are live and out there and available to everyone, everything that I use. Um, you can do the Facebook follow-up and it goes through our 30 days or our 27 days of follow-up when you first come in. And then it ends with adding into our unknown prospect type, which immediately puts them on those two follow-up plans and a quarterly call plan for the remainder of the year. So as soon as those touches are done, we immediately then put someone back into another 56 touches that we can follow up with them on That's, and so have it created, going. You, so you create a lot of them from scratch, but you also yep. use KW style or KW created smart plans. Tell everyone because creating from scratch is tough, but you've uploaded yours into the smart plans. The KW uh, smart plans you use, I'm assuming neighborhood nurture, happy birthday, home anniversary. Yep. Or I've, or I've went and checked the library for other agents who've created them Yeah. as well, right? And, and I take some of theirs. I'm fine if it works for someone else. It's yeah. going to work for me. But creating, from, creating them from scratch, I actually want to challenge that idea. It's not that hard. My buyer and seller smart plans, this is how I built them. I went on to Google and went, what are 50 great tips for home buyers? And then I took an article from like HGTV or whatever it was. I Bickle branded it, changed the words, took out the stuff that we all know is not true and <laughs> put it in an email. <laughs> you mean the part about you will only look at three homes and buy one and the home inspection will be perfect and you'll buy a house even on $12,000 a year salary? Yeah. Okay. And then we super localized it too. So for example, for a seller smart plan, if we were like, if you paint these objects, it's going to help improve the value of your home. By the way, if you're thinking about getting painting done, here is our recommended preferred painter. And then we linked our businesses into it. And here's where you can get it even better. You want to put all of your ads on easy street? Here's what I did this year. I went to all of my preferred vendors. I said, I have 3,000 people in my database. We will blast this smart plan. You will be featured in three emails this year. Are you willing to give me $1,000 because we've had such a good relationship to be part of that? I and my am... vendors paid for my entire year of Facebook. That's the, 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 the fact that you Googled tips on home selling or home buying and you just made it your own is brilliant. I've actually never never heard of doing that. And I think it's a great, uh, great idea. Um, Trent and Krista, are you guys using smart plans for anything at all? Yeah, uh, I haven't gone super in depth, but uh, most of what I'm doing is task oriented as well. I don't have Twilio set up yet. Um, I think what's really cool is if you listen to everybody's opinion on smart plans is it's they're not over complicating it. It's really actually pretty simple. So. Uh, mine are really just reminders. We've got one for active clients to make sure that we're checking in with them every so days. It just pops up and lets me know, <clears throat> excuse me, lets me know. Um, I don't know. We probably have three or four. We've got our post close system put together. So that automatically shoots out a request for testimonials to go to exact. And I post the links, right? So that they don't have to do any research. It's put your, put your review right here, please. And then actually just copy paste it and put it right here too. Um, and so we're not, we don't make it very complicated, at least not yet, because we don't have text going out and stuff like that, but, um, it's really just tasks and emails. I think the, the, the big thing that I noticed when we made the switch to command was the conversations amongst the team changed. It was a lot different. And, um, and what I mean by that is we weren't talking about, Hey, did, you, did the appraisal come back on this property? Did this happen? Did that, did that, did that? Did you guys do this? Did your team take care of this? Yes, yes, or no. They can literally go into command into the opportunity with someone that's under contract and see that someone from my team or myself have has checked a box on, you know, December 10th at 10 5 AM and the appraisal came back at value and there's a note in there. So I think, it has been a game changer for the agents because they don't have to think about that. Like once something gets under contract, they just know it's gonna be taken care of. And if they ever have a question, they're diving into command to find the answer to their question. Um, and then another thing I wanna to add to Nick, and I know this is different for every state, but we don't do leases here in Minnesota or- um, Well, maybe we can talk about that when we change yeah, the topic. So we, we do our lease category for recruiting stuff now. Yeah, which has oh, gotcha. been awesome for our agents. So, so that's been really fun because my team 
talks to agents too during the transaction process. You know, we're, we're we actually do a lot of it because it's contract to close. Mm. And when we develop a really strong relationship, we'll put notes under that agent's opportunity in Trent's leases, and then he can continue that relationship with that particular agent for recruiting purposes. That's a great. That's a so that's great awesome. idea. Hey um, Nick. Hey, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just have one thing that I sure. think if everybody added this as their first task on any smart plan, they would see the immense value in command. And so we actually went back and added the very first task is that we set up a property alert <clears throat> for every That's single huge, lead that huge. comes in. And I know that sounds silly and it's done in the contact on the far right side, but property alerts those going out and the buyer or the seller interacting with those is what really gives us the ability to stalk people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, what is a property alert? It literally sends out properties on your behalf. It's, it's a like a search. listing alert, only you're gonna do it through command so that you can stalk people and see when they come back to your site, when they're looking at your properties. It's one of the best ways that you can engage with people who aren't engaging. <clears throat> That doesn't require you to make a phone call. So yeah. we literally, I'm paying my 13 year old daughter. This is how easy it is to go back and add property alerts for every single person. And we use the pool at a pretty high level at, in the pool so that they can come back to my, to my command, to my site so that I can then pounce on them because if they're looking, they're ready. So every single smart plan has set up property alert. It's non-negotiable. Do not pass go. We've got to get these people back on our site. Well, I, I just want to add to that because that's hugely important. So, you know, a lot of my smart plans actually start with, or at some point in the smart plan, probably the second touch. It's like, I took the liberty to create a saved search of homes for you based on the home that you initially looked at on Facebook, right? Because that's all you know about the person. And so let's say it's a $250,000 house, three beds, two baths, you know, whatever, basic, right? Uh, in any town USA. So that's all you know until you get in touch with them. Set that search up. I, I set the liberty, I took the liberty of, to set you up on this search. Um, if any, if when you start looking through the properties, if anything needs to be changed, please let me know. I don't want to spam you with homes you don't like. That's instant customer service. And that kind of brings me to my next question. We talk a lot about command and how it's helping the agent. There's a lot of stuff on the consumer side, but even if you're not using the consumer side, is there anything in command and anybody can answer this first, anything within command that has impressed your client or yes. you, you have felt, okay, hold on. Let me finish the question, Julie. Simmer down, Julie, simmer down. So shh, okay. Oh, all right. Basically anything that you've done in command that inadvertently made a huge difference or an impact on the customer that you're working with? Julie. Okay. Julie, do you have, do you want to answer that, Julie? You guys, I, I just, wasn't I'm sure sorry. if you even had, I, just love I didn't when, know. I love when something works and literally I screenshot it this morning because, so you guys know that in opportunities right now, today, you can set up client updates. Yes. Okay. Now, I love it. To be fair, you have to you have to activate it on every single opportunity. Okay, so once they go into pre list or buyer brokerage agreement signed, like we have already built out those checklists and we've already selected which ones we want, guys. Today, like first off, I also make sure that as a as the primary agent or as the other agent on the deal that my agents are also getting those updates. Right. So, Carissa yeah. and Trent, if you were on the team. Every morning at 7.30 in the morning, you and the client and myself gets a checklist of all the stuff that staff did, right? So just so you know, it says, hi, Julie, here are the things we're checking off the list on your home at 123 Main Street. Then it has a photo of the property and then the list of things that you did. And there's two ways you can do it. One, and just for people watching, my nails are painted because it's very, I'm very, I'm very self for people watching on Facebook, my nails are painted because Elf on the Shelf painted my nails in the middle of the night. Okay, just getting at that into the open. Um, that, uh, that, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, the emails can go out all at once for every transaction, or you can tell it when you want it to go out. But they only go out if you go into that transaction and check off the list that you did something that day. So that was big. So the first time that happened, what was the reaction? 
Well, no, it's just, it's just, I love it because it, it re, it re energizes the team as to why they're part of the team. Like, wow, look at all these things Sydney did on the file, by the way, our checklists, like one of them has like 85 checklist things. Okay. Why? Because I want them to know that I'm doing like 400 things on every file. Like we have, um, for the sellers, right? It's like, um, made sure is on realtor.com <laughs> made sure is on realtor.com right. updated. Like we're not really doing that. <laughs> well, it goes on realtor.com anyway. So uh, some no, of those wait, things but what happened today, Nick, I get an email back from one of my clients, right? Cause it says, here's what we've checked off your list. And he wrote back the cutest thing. He goes, looks like Santa isn't the only one checking his list. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, that's awesome. What are some of, what are some of the, and, and Aaron, by the way, that was something that client update thing was something that was really important to you guys. Cause the, th the, the, the platform you had before had those and you wanted to make sure that command had those. So have those, have you guys started using those? We haven't started implementing them. Um, <clears throat> partially because we're, we're down a man to do maternity leave. Um, but that was the biggest pain point. And the thing that our old system made us look so good, so upper effortlessly, you know, we were doing our work, but the system was making us look amazing. And we, yeah. we really missed that. So I'm super geeked that those are ready. Awesome. So what are some other, I want to hear from some of you other guys, what are you using within command that has, has like improved your consumer experience because you know that's what when, when command was rolling out one of the big things that command one of the big pain points command wanted to solve was communication because josh team always says you know a consumer doesn't want an on-demand agent they just want on-demand information so what about what you're doing is you know wowing your clients we have one huge one okay go for and it it's, it's, it's linked to command it's not necessarily command all the way okay but Nick, what is the number one used real estate website in America? Uh, Zillio. Z Zillio. And what is the command website search engine based off of because of the consumer feedback? It looks exactly like Zillow in its usage, except its usage is even better because of customizable search engines in the link into our database. Well, imagine this. Canada doesn't have Zillow. You're lucky. I don't have to compete with that. So I have the best consumer search site. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Dude, I didn't nation. know that. We're moving <laughs> to Canada. And I don't have to compete with Zillow. That's awesome. So when I turn around and say, hey, if you want the most customizable, most amazing experience, not only am I giving them that, I'm not even giving them that with them having like something light to go to. I'm just straight up giving them exactly what I'm saying I'm giving them. And that's all just like Julie's saying, that's all linking back into our database and we're getting those updates and we're getting those searches and it is blowing our clients' minds. Well, I just want to say that uh, you bring up a great point. So when our search, when our um, KW sites were launched, you know, agents, I don't know if you guys realize this, agents like to talk about how successful they are. I don't know if you guys have noticed, um, but yeah, every now and again, they like to just talk about how much, how many homes they've sold. Here's the thing. The consumer really doesn't care. Right. And so when they go to your website and that's literally the first thing they see, because let's face it, it is right. Hey, it's the awesome team. And we did a bajillion dollars and sold a bajillion homes. How can we help you? Consumers like, whoa, that's kind of weird. They feel like instantly they're being spammed. The, the experience is not about them. It's about you. And so when our sites rolled out, agents all across our com company were like, what? Where can I put all my awards? Well, you can still do that inside the site. But when they get to your site, Zillow, the one thing that Zillow has done that helped us was spend billions of dollars with a B to figure out how consumers want to search for homes. And so we copied it and it works. You know why we know it works? Because there's been almost 300 million searches on our agent sites and app. That's how we know it works year to date. That's how we know it's working. So put all that other stuff aside. As long as someone requests to see a home and it goes to you, that's all you should care about. And that's essentially what our sites are doing. Um, so Josh, you basically have like been like, look at all this research I did in Canada. 
that we don't have this site. And I formulated it myself and created an amazing experience for you. So you do have that upper hand. And how are they reacting to it? The app. Because we don't have to compete with any of those apps as well. We've got to compete with Realtor.ca, which is a garbage app. Like, it's the worst. <laughs> so all of those, in, and I like what you said, all of those consumer products have been great for the consumer. And we've managed to embrace them because we're not treating them like agent products. I don't care what those products do for me. I care about what they do for my consumer and the feelings that they inspire in our consumer. And the feelings that I see in my consumer is of a massive amount of searches that is giving me a massive amount of unfair information, which is making it really easy to customize our follow-ups. I also want to say, and, and, and you guys can let me know what you think. A lot of a lot of agents I hear in our company saying, I don't like the consumer app and I don't like the consumer site. Now you guys got to realize, KW has done consumer labs on millions of consumers. These sites were built for them because it's basically the feedback that KW got. So if you're not going to get a client on your app or on your site, another agent in our company will. And once they're on another agent's branded site or app, it's going to be a pain in the neck to get them onto yours because first of all, they're going to blame you for not putting them on yours. Um, it's just like when your client texts you a, a home on Zillow, how come we didn't see this one on your site? Right. All, you know, it, it, it's that feeling. So it's not about whether you like it. It's about whether they like it and KW has done that research for you and they do like it. So I would definitely jump in on that. Also, I feel our value proposition isn't, let necessarily the li- necessarily the listings it's the neighborhoods and josh you don't have neighborhoods up in canada but right you don't have neighbors but here you do okay the we neighborhoods are the value proposition because we're the only ones that have it we're exclusive to that feature and so eventually they're going to be on zillow looking for neighborhoods and they won't be able to find it they'll be like oh wait that's on trent's app i'm gonna go there and look for that Trent, you, I know you want to say something. So sorry. I'll yeah, start. I was just no, I was just going to say that uh, a lot of um, agents are worried about incorrect information, or if yeah. it's the client and it's not perfect, what are they going to say? And and I just say set the expectation up front. The way that I pitch it to people is, um, I always say we're in the middle of building this really cool app that's already capable of some amazing stuff. But would you be willing to like just go in, play with it, test it, and then I tell them about the collections and some other things you can do and. Like you can connect with your spouse or your loved one and actually create collections in Aspen for when you guys are ready to buy that mountain house in 10 years. I'm like, really? That's cool. And so you have to just set the expectation that it's not going to like log in and it's going to like change their world. Like go in, play with it, have fun with it. And it's amazing how many people that I've sent that to have screenshotted or, or messaged me the picture of the app that they're using, which they've chosen the KW one. And, and we ask for feedback. In fact, during my client check-ins, like I feel like half of our clients think like Trent built the app because they're like, hey, you should do this. You should do Your that. App. Like, well, Your app is awesome. It's I'm actually like, thank not you. Out. I mean, it is ours, but we didn't build it. So we can't just like make changes overnight. Um, and to piggyback off what Julie said, I'm going to kind of backtrack here for a little bit. And your client updates, I think that is just like, it's been the biggest game changer for our team. And I'm going to use alignment again. Like we are, we are in alignment. Like a client calls Trent out of the blue to ask them a question, him a question about something. And Trent's like, Oh, squirrel. Oh, this, Oh, that, you know, like he may not be focused on that exact opportunity in that given moment. He can go on his computer, look up command, see the opportunity and see everything that we have done in that opportunity and talk on the same page as the client. Where I feel like in in the past when we weren't in commands, those conversations were had and then he's like, wait, hold on, let me ask Carissa or hold on, let me let me do this or hold on, let me pull up my email or let me see if that went out. And I feel like then the client loses faith. And um, their one thing that they have told us over and over again when we see reviews is communication. They never had to think about it. They just moved. I mean, we had one client that was in a horrible situation with their, their newborn child and they were in the hospital during the, the entire transaction. And she's, she just started crying at closing. And she's like, you know what? We're signing this paperwork today and I never had to worry. Like I never worried once that it wasn't gonna get done or things weren't being done. I just knew. 
And so that tells me right there that we are in communication with our clients and command is working because we're not really doing anything different than what we did before. I mean, we are kind of, but like now it's recorded. We're just all, the, we're just all speaking the same language and we're all in the same system. Yeah. It's, you know, you guys brought up a great point because that Josh, you know, I, I know that you also do that too. You'll, you know, throw a new feature out at your clients and you'll say, Hey, you know, we just rolled out this feature. We're just kind of testing it out. You know, can you let us know what you think? And it's kind of cool because you bring them into the process of, you know, they feel like they're a part of something, right? Instead of, you know, you're getting in front of any glitch that might get in the way and you're saying, you know, we're building new tech and I would really love for you to be involved in giving us feedback. So that's, that's super, uh, that's super valuable. Um, we're running out of time. So I just want to see if there's any quick questions here um, in the, in the, in the chat. Um you know, there's, there's a bunch of questions and, I'm, and I, we've covered a lot of them, but a lot of the questions are, is this recorded? Yes, of course, this gold is recorded. Of course it's recorded. So let's just talk about this then before we finish up, because a lot of the people are, are saying, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? Because listen, Command has 10 different applets and together in all of those applets, I think there's like 9,000 features. Like I didn't make up that number, right? There's like 9,000 different features that Command can do where should we start, right? Like all of these great things you guys are doing, you know, you're, you're using smart plans, you're using opportunities to track your business, you're gamifying opportunities, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, trying to bring your database, health, database health score, which we didn't talk about to a hundred percent, which means name, email, phone number, birthday, physical address, all of these things. So you can stay in touch, but where should somebody start when they really want to use command the way you guys are using it? Where is the place that you look at command and you think it can help your business the most? S start there, work on that one section at a time. Don't try and move over and do it all at once. Just look and say, this would really help my business. This is where I'm going to start. Yeah, Aaron, would, where, where, you, oh, sorry, Julie, go ahead. I was going to say that that's all we did, right? We just started in contacts and we said, let's figure out what nailing it looks like in contacts, right? And then we're going to move into opportunities. And then we're going to check out this thing called sketch house. Whoops. Now it's called designs. And then we're going to check out this thing called campaigns. And then we're going to check out what lead accelerator, right? And, and my next big one is consumer, right? Because the guides are connected to my opportunities, which set the table for my client to use my app to follow the transaction. So it's like, that's the next big applet, but I couldn't tell you about it now, right? Like, I don't, I'm sure that there are applets that all of us are like, wait, what does that one do? And so it's like, pick one and go and, and, and be willing to accept that there will be days that you will log in and it will not look the same. <laughs> and be okay with that because the price is right. Right. And know that it's, it'll be, it'll come back. Like all my designs disappeared the other day. I'm like, everybody relax. They'll be back. Right. It happens. And so I would say, I say, start with contacts. And here's what I tell people personally, if your contacts are already in there and already a disaster, don't go delete them all. Just create a tag that says to be cleaned and apply it to everybody. It's easy to do bulk action apply. Okay. And then take the total number of people in your database divide it by 22, that's work days in a month, and then put it on your calendar. Every day, I'm going to clean 12 people, whatever the number ends up being. And you literally log in, you, you, I, you pick that tag, and you pick the 12 people, you just go, right? And as soon as I clean up Carissa and Trent, and the birthday's in there, and the address is in there, and the whatever I want in there, I remove the tag, and I'm like one step closer to having a clean CRM. So that's what I would do. That's do, awesome advice. do what Julie said. That was super good. <laughs> well, it's like, like, it's so said. crazy. If you log in and you don't have a system to, to like whittle it down, like you'll just keep logging in. And then one day you'll say, command doesn't work. Right. Well, you that's thinking big and that's thinking big and going small, right? Taking small action every day and, and it equaling big results. But I, I think people just have to stop overcomplicating it. Uh, the common theme here with all of us is that we're all, none of us are afraid to fail on it. Right. It's like Julie said one thing that I just laughed at because I literally did that. And that was like you went in and just clicked something. You're like, oh, I can do that. OK, click. I mean, the first ever campaign that I do was a mailer. And I, I was like, I wonder if this works. 
And I sent it to 20 people and I'm not kidding. Two days later, a lady called me. I went and listed it because she needed to leave the state for medical reasons. And we made a $10,000 commission check on a $20 mailer. And I didn't even know if it was going to get sent. Yeah. And I think something that he, he started out as a team leader saying to our team was he kind of assigned things like my assignment was designs, just go in with designs, play with it, get familiar with it, see what it can do for us. And then when he sent that postcard and I saw what it looked like, it was just, it was one of the templates. So it was good. It wasn't bad, but I was like, Oh my gosh, there's so much more we could have done with that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but whatever. And it got him. Well, uh, so at so, first, like when designs first came, it was um, in my opinion, just kind of like clunky, but Carissa, it's got it's come a long way and people are like so gung ho on Canva. She will tell you a hundred times over that designs is so much faster, so much better. Mm -hmm. We have a custom typeface now with for our branding and that's now uploaded. So mm -hmm. it's just like a one-stop shop and he so, has this like super savvy friend in LA that's super successful in designs and graphic designs and he just helped us with a rebrand and he was walking through the process with me and we were getting all these templates uploaded because we did custom templates and he was mind blown at what or designs was doing for us and he's, he's a like photoshop. oh can you do he's this he's a photoshop at a very high level kind of guy he's, he's like very yeah, shocked, he's but. like you should buy this photoshop you should do this you should do that and he's like oh wait wait a minute you don't have to I'm like yeah i don't have to it's free go in and do it just get in there just get in there and start clicking stuff you know what that's funny that you say that trend because even when i was regional tech trainer that's essentially how i learned right i would just go in and click buttons and see what worked and you would be super surprised what you would figure out right because when it comes to tech i don't consider myself a technologist i'm a realtor who knows who loves technology and i just figure things out and and if you try everything out on yourself create a contact for yourself try everything out on yourself an opportunity a, a saved search smart plans you know all of those things test them out on yourself so you mess up on you first before you send someone a fourth of july email on march 24th and I actually did get one of those the other day. I'm like, oops, should I tell this person? I still sometimes have nightmares of like finishing a campaign and then getting that little red bar across the top. It's like, Err. I love how you have oh, nightmares. Ah. You have nightmares about that. Yeah. Um, Chris and Trent, I, sorry, I have to add this. Go for my, it. My wife is our director of operations. She's also a graphic designer. That's what she went through school for. She's a graphic designer. She's an animator. We have, we have all of the top programs, all of them. She does all of our stuff in designs. Oh, so she, even though she's like got, a, even got though a degree in that. She can use Photoshop in her sleep. All of our stuff is done in designs. Because is it just because it's, she finds it's it super because easy? Because it's so fast, simple, and slick. That's crazy. Yes. That's crazy. Awesome. Well, if any of you guys have any words of wisdom you want to leave us with, please do that now. Kimberly, do you have any words of wisdom you want to leave us with? Um, I would just say like kind of piggybacking off what everybody else is saying is like, it's not meant for everybody to use every single feature. Oh, and, that's a good one. Yes. And just like pick a couple of things that are really applicable to your business, but don't like, I don't use campaigns because it's just not, it doesn't fit my business model and that's okay. Like, so don't get into command and feel like, oh, I have to be doing all these things because these other successful agents are. Well, I love that you said that because that is a great way to end in the sense that command has so many features and agents get overwhelmed because they think they have to use all of them. And the reason why command has so many features is because it was built with the input of a hundred plus thousand agents. And when you have a hundred plus thousand agents giving input, the, you know, there ends up being a lot of different ways to generate and stay and to generate business and nurture current business. And so like Kimberly said, you might not be a high level Facebook lead generator, you might be more geared towards your sphere. You know, you might be someone who, um, I mean, I can't even think you might be someone who wants to, oh, farm a neighborhood. And that's why you can go and scope out a geo farm and send direct mail and see how much to see how much certain areas are worth. There's so many different ways to generate business. So don't think that you have to go in there and use everything. In fact, Gary has never said, stop using the system that you're already using and only use command. He's never said that, you know, but when I'm, when I get on calls with, with mega teams, and they go, well, I'm not ready to switch to command. I go, no one's 
even saying for you to do that, but I guarantee you that there is at least one thing within command that's going to bring you value and save you money. It might be creating single property landing pages for each of your listings in less than two minutes, right? Some people pay a hundred bucks a month for a platform that does that. So even if you only use command for that and you're saving a hundred bucks, you're winning. So look at it that way. Don't feel like you ever have to use all of it or only command. There's going to be something for everybody. So anyway, I don't necessarily want to be the last word. Can someone else say something that isn't the last, that's going to be the last word? Josh, you're good at last words. <laughs> Leave us with something inspiring, Josh. <laughs> I, I really think it's important in what you're saying that you jump into command. I, over the course of the lockdown, I have done 272 tech audits with people in Canada where I've just taken time out. I've spent half an hour to an hour with them and we've just went over tech audits. And out of those 272 people, I would say about 80% of them were people who told me command doesn't work and that there's no reason to go into it. And there's two things that I've done with that. Those are the people that I offered the tech audits to at the highest level first, because I wanted to show that most agents do not use their database well enough to say that a database doesn't even work. Until you are <laughs> highly systemized, you can't say that a database doesn't work. And I've, and I've challenged that. And the second, and I'm going to bring back my mic drop from the last time I was on. If you want to tell me command doesn't work, come over here. Let me show you my bank account and I'll show you exactly how it does work <laughs> because it absolutely <laughs> crushed my business out this year and saved me a ton of money in the process. That is that is a great way to end. I love that. Jo when Josh said that on Commander Morning, everyone was like, oh, snap. Yeah, seriously. Um, listen, and I just want to say that does command have technical difficulties sometimes? Yes, of course. It's technology. It does. But what I have found, Josh, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, a lot of the complaints from command is, is lack of understanding around the, the product, right? Um, and people want it to work exactly like their current database does. Right. No two exactly. databases work the exact same. Right. They want, they, they, it does what they want it to do. It just doesn't do it the way they want it. They want to do it. And right. So if you're moving over from top producer, you can get the same things done. It's just going to be done a slightly different way. Anyway, I appreciate that guys. Um, thanks for being here. If you don't believe command, um, if you don't believe command works, Josh will text you a picture of his, uh, of his, of his bank account. And when pandemic's over, he's buying drinks for all of us. Josh, I'm like an hour away from you. I think I live under you in, in, in Michigan, I believe. So can you, you do, you're, 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 you're really close. You're actually only 45 minutes past my commute for work right now. <laughs> can you put in a good word at the border there and say that I've been quarantining for eight months and I just want to get out of America? No. Um, so anyway, thank you for being here, everybody. Um, it's been, it's been a blast. We've had five or 600 people watching and I know that they're all grateful to you. So thank you so much and it's been fun and have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys put some of this stuff to good use, right? I hope that you guys got a lot out of it. And the recording will be in Command Your Conversion and on my YouTube channel and watch it over and over again and take a lot of notes. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Nick. Have a great Thanks. holiday. Yeah, Merry Christmas, yeah. happy holidays. All. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, make it Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.